Amplify Science Matter and Energy in Ecosystems Unit Simulation Tool. So this simulation tool is used in numerous lessons. Uh, some things we want to make sure we understand it's teaching us. Uh, first off is if we adjust the level of sunlight, uh, it is going to provide more energy for the producers to make more energy storage molecules. Uh, and what we have also is we have abiotic or non-living matter. Up here we have air, and in that air contains carbon dioxide. At the bottom we have dead matter, and within that dead matter, they list some energy storage molecules. It's important that we know that the energy storage molecules that are down there are primarily dead organisms uh, with decomposers. And then across the middle, we have producers. We have primary consumers, secondary consumers, and decomposers. In other words, we have all those things that can do photosynthesis. And then we have the primary consumers that eat the producers. And then we have the secondary consumers, which are the eaters of the primary consumers. And then the decomposers, which even though they're on the far right here, are going to decompose any of these things that are dead. Uh, we have our settings, which we go into in another video. But right now, I'm going to let this thing run. And there's some things I want to point out. First off, notice how many energy storage molecules are in the producers. And that number goes down in consumers, and then it goes down even more in secondary consumers, and even more in decomposers. Even though it's not in this unit, uh, it turns out that there's a principle in ecosystems where only about 10% of the energy is passed from one level to the next. So there's a, there's a reason here, even though they don't directly tell you what it is. So that's just kind of cool to know. Um, while this is running, uh, don't forget that you can pull up information on what's happening at any point, and you can also pull up a graph uh, if you want to see actual numbers. But uh, in the simulation, what you should know now is that, yeah, the amount of sunlight that you control, should uh, you should see an increase or a decrease in energy storage molecules as long as you don't slow down the amount of carbon dioxide. Because if you remember from the chemistry we did in class, every six of these that come in to producers, six carbon dioxide molecules, uh, it's contributed to making one energy storage molecule. And that is why those little chocolate chip cookie looking things have six chocolate chips in them or six dots. Notice the dot in the carbon dioxide molecule and the dot in the energy storage molecule. Uh, if we start killing some of these producers, okay, you should notice that, uh, first off, energy storage molecules go down into the dead matter area for the decomposers, but also that makes less energy storage molecules, or the little cookies, available to the consumers. There aren't as many of them to eat. Uh, if you kill off consumers, you are making less available to the secondary consumers, but you are making more available to the decomposers. Producers, if you remember photosynthesize. So they are taking carbon dioxide molecules, using energy from the sun to make energy storage molecules. But then all four of these things, the producers, consumers, secondary consumers, decomposers, all go through cellular respiration. So every one of those cookies that comes along, you will see one occasionally fly apart. Oh, that one right there went right up. Boom, the cookie disappears. And then you see additional carbon dioxide molecules going up into the abiotic matter. That is what the simulation is doing when it's showing you that uh, energy storage molecules are being converted to carbon dioxide and being used for energy. Notice as this goes on and on in the animation, we see around the outside, we see lots of producers growing. We see lots of uh, consumers growing. You notice things like rabbits and squirrels, things that eat plants. Uh, in the secondary consumers, as the energy flows over, we start to see uh, fox and as a spider. So as time goes on, the secondary consumers start to grow more and more as they get more energy to support them. And then over in the decomposers, notice there's no direct line between secondary consumer and decomposer. The decomposers only access the dead matter because that's what they eat. So there's more and more mushrooms and things growing that decompose and worms and anything that eats dead stuff. If you want, you can directly burn material. So the dead matter, the energy storage molecules there will turn directly into carbon dioxide. You can also choose to trap carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so it's not available to the producers to make more energy storage molecules. So anything here that you add more stuff, for example, more energy and more carbon dioxide, you're going to see more energy storage molecules or cookies. And anytime you kill off stuff or you trap carbon dioxide and prevent photosynthesis and cellular respiration, you're going to see less of things. Now, we're also going to go into each of these cells. So part of this Simulation allows you to look inside the cell. So we have a plant cell. We have a chloroplast on the left, and that is where photosynthesis occurs. 
and we have mitochondria on the right. And in the animation, what you should be seeing, by the way, note that there's a, a key at the top that shows us what water looks like, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and energy storage molecules. In the chloroplasts, then there goes some oxygen and energy storage molecule. Here comes carbon dioxide and water. And if you remember from our lesson in class, right, uh, carbon dioxide and water react to make glucose and oxygen. So we're seeing that happen with these icons in the chloroplast. Plants also cellular respirate. Over here in the mitochondria, we're now seeing you know, oxygen come in. This is why we breathe. We see an energy storage mo molecule come in. This is why we eat. And they will transform, with, and then out will go carbon dioxide and water. So just the opposite of what we saw with photosynthesis. So there you go. Your simulation will show you numerous things about what go on in an ecosystem.